Instead of Far Dummies, I should have named this video By Dummies, because we don't have no clue what we're doing. Man, I don't know if we can pull this off or not, but hey, let's go find out. All right, Lake Header Kit. Gonna do that and see if we can make that happen. This ought to be very interesting because, uh, like I said, never done it before. Been known to screw things up. So, yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Oh boy, here we go. I'm all in. So, this kit, uh, they put oil, film oil on some of these parts, keep them rusting. Of course, you see, <laughs> it didn't do a lot of good, even though they had it in plastic bags and a little oil on it. I'm gonna take uh, some mineral spirits. Just spray them down a little bit, wipe them off, just get some of that oil off of it. Yep. Clean all the parts like that, and then we'll go. So I want to do the driver's side first. I'm going to get this steering arm, but get this stuff out of, steering out of the way. I don't need it in my way. So just move that. And we're just sitting there, no problem. That'd be fine. All right, now we can work. Got a little dent there we need to straighten out. So this is gonna come. Is it the other horn fit better? Not really. Something like that. Yeah, it can come straight out. Nope, neat. So with that flat against there, the horn's too close. I don't want to angle the pipe that way. So the horn needs to go up on there a little bit further. So I need to go ahead and cut this pipe. How about hand me a marker, one of the red markers. Mark it where it's at. So I'm thinking uh, this long, this pipe way up in there, I'm thinking if I cut this off just a little bit longer where that mark's at, I know this is gonna go on at least to the mark, a little bit further past the mark, so I cut it back behind the mark here somewhere. And I should be able to get this. By doing that, I should be able to get that horn to turn out just a little bit. I can go further up on there. This here is hitting up in there. Don't need about long anyway. I don't want no bunch of this sticking up in there. No. <laughs> So yeah, I gotta cut this off about a quarter inch past that mark. First thing we need to do. So now I slide that pipe on a little further than that mark. See that? And I get more of an angle, which is what I wanted. So if I put that on, and I get the angle I want on the cow, which is about right there. How much we got? Two, three inches? Mm, three and a half right there. Okay. So I think it looked better if his horn was in further. What we got there? Inch. So I need to take an inch and that was what, three and a half? Yeah. I need to take, I need to what, two inches off of it? Yeah, two and a half. All right, so I cut two inches off of that. And this has got a seam inside of it. All the way down. Probably see it right there. Anyway, we'll make sure that's down, seam down. So I'm gonna put this on where it fits square against that head. And this is gonna go in till I get the right distance angle, same angle as a cow, about an inch and a half. So, need to tack it right there. But before I do, I gotta clean all this up. So when, when I do weld it, it'll be already be cleaned up.
All right, first piece. Right there. We're close enough. All right, first piece is done. Tacked. <laughs> first piece is tacked, we gotta start. We gotta start somewhere. We can cut that off. We gotta take the ball peen hammer, we'll weld this, beat that gap down a little closer. So now, what I need to do, take the tape measure, the ruler, and get that there, get it down where it's aligned with the motor. Something like right there, get that inch and a half. Should be flat right there, that should be it, yeah. Now, I'll go ahead and do, make the back one next, so I can get the right distance here and then these two last. So, with it right there, I need to get how far out, how, how far out I need to be. It's gotta be fun to do that. But anyway, seven and three quarter. I'll write that down. So, what I don't want done, I clamp my flange, just kinda hold it steady and I got this lined up with this first one. I mean, it's gonna come in a little bit, but not enough to make an eighth inch something, it ain't gonna be much. And I gotta need seven and three quarter. So I got that straight out of seven. And close as I can get it, and it's gonna be, it's, I mean, this is, uh, like I said, I had never done this before, so hopefully we can get it without screwing up too bad. So yeah, about right there. We got a mark on the table on this end, so we keep that bell light exactly where it needs to be there. And this piece, I'm gonna set it right there on where it's gonna go and use the speed square to make it square with the flange so it'll come straight out from flange like it's supposed to. This is the most important end I don't want it to go straight in. I want it to be like it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna pull this out as far as I can and get a mark. Well, we're gonna cut it. Well, I want to cut it longer because it's gonna wrap around. This is gonna be this, that side, but it's gonna kind of wrap around to there. So I gotta make it longer and then trim it to fit. So I need to cut it at least a half inch longer there, I think. Yeah. Just go ahead and cut everything a little bit big and then we can shape it up and fit later after the fact. So, need to cut that. Yep, that looks real safe. Giant death wheel, no guard, no nothing. Just two old guys. Hey, don't point that thing this way. So after some highly classified scientific rat rod calculations <laughs> and a lot of grinding, we got our first piece where it fits, right there. And the good thing about that is we can use that same angle on the other ones. We just had to cut them shorter on this end. So I'm going to try to copy that onto the next one best I can. And we just make it a little bit bigger and we won't have so much grinding to do. 
so I'm just gonna lay it up there and eyeball it the best I can and mark, mark that one too. By the way, guys, don't ever do what we're doing with these death wheels or grinding stones without that guard on it. I mean, you know, like we've been doing this for a long, really long time. And it, you guys well know if you get this thing in a bind, that wheel flies apart, it's going to hurt somebody. So don't ever do it without the guard on it just because you see me doing it without the guard on it. Especially that big death wheel I had on there. Man, you really got to be careful with that one. So don't even do that. <laughs> But you, hey, you guys know, like, you always gotta have that wheel coming off of the metal, not pushing on to it. So if I wouldn't wanna come down here and do that, have it pushing on to that, that's not good. That's how you screw up and hurt somebody. So if I were gonna cut there, I'd have to come in here and let it turn the other way and not push like that. I don't know if you guys understand that or not, but it's a, it's a lot to it a death wheel or a grinding stone where you don't kick back on you. So don't ever do what we're doing without the guard on it. Simple as that. Well, that's it. I'm out of here. Just kidding. I wouldn't miss this for nothing. Fascinating. Yep, we got a good start. You on the mark. Uh, on the mark. Whoop. There you go. Square. We square. So after an hour or so of grinding and cutting and grinding, we've got these three maybe. And uh, they fit. Not absolutely perfect, but we're good welders. We, <laughs> at least I hope we are, we weld it up. So what's gonna happen is those are gonna go there. That's kind of what it's gonna look like right there. Yeah, guys, this is really happening. Try to cut some holes. I guess a uh, step bit probably start with and see what happens. Yeah, not quite there yet. Got it stuck together, still got a few gaps. Got to do a little bit better fitting than that, so got to work on that before we start welding her up for sure. My confidence level just fell down a couple digits. I don't know if you can see down in there, but I got to open them holes up a little bit more too. Yeah, got to do better on the hole. We got to open them up too down in there so it'll flow a little better. We need a lot of flow. <laughs>
so what I'm doing here, I got you know, I got to squeeze this, you know, make it oval shape. And so I just stick it in the vise, look that about three quarter down, and I got to get this here lined up perfect in line with the vise. So, and then when I do that, I just squeeze it. Just squeeze it together with the vise a bunch. Maybe that much. Then you get this uh, oval shape, which matches that. And then it don't fight quite, then it don't still don't quite fit, so I can give it some love taps with the hammer. So every time you tap on it with the hammer, it shrinks it down a little bit, so that's what I want to do. Keep doing that to fits. Think it's in there now. So, and when we end up with a fit like that, that's what we want. Of course, it's not going to be that far in when we weld it, but that's it, you want it to fit like that. So, what I done, what I done, we had to trim, we had to cut some off the ends of these to make them, you know, get them all. Well, we can do this, put that ruler across and kind of get it flat all the way across and get it close as we can there. Put the horn on and see how it looks. And I mean, it ain't perfect, but we can make it work. I mean, it looks really close. Don's a good welder. He can fill that gap up, no problem. So now we need to get it turned over so I can mark around here so we can cut the holes in the horn. Yep, that's what we got to do now. You got some carrying on there. You think that's weird. You ought to watch us do patch panels. Now that is weird. All right, we got it tight together. We're just gonna test fit it before we weld it, make sure we're good. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. We can slide it out of that flange a little bit and we'll be good right there. 
Yeah, we're like three quarter. We're already matching those sides, so when we slide both of them out to like one inch, yeah. they'll both be the same. Yeah, we're ready to weld that one up. Carry on. These old guys might pull this off after all. So I got a piece of 3-8 coal roll. I'm threading the ends of it. Uh, I got a good bevel on the end because I, you know, I need to run a die on it. It's a lot easier to get a die started if you got a bevel in. I got a little flat spot ground in it so I could clamp it in the vise and that flat spot helps hold it from spinning because it's, it's wanting to spin. Got a little flat spot there. Tighten it up real good. Pull it all on it. And the hardest part is getting the starter straight. But if you ever get a starter straight, you're good. That bevel on the end helps a little bit to get it started straight. I think it's started now. Yeah. Once you get it started, you're good to go. This is a 3.8.16 die, you know, just a standard thread nut, so I'm gonna use on it. So it's a 3.8.16 die, by the way. It's 3.8 round rod, cold roll. And just like that, you got a threaded rod. You run the threads up on there as far as you need to. Just like that. Now I put two nuts I can have, so they can tighten up together. You'll see in a minute what I'm doing. Yeah, I know that's rough. I could have done a lot better job, but guess what? When I first seen this pile of abandoned yard art and decided to buy it, this is what I pictured the end result right here. I didn't picture no slick, glossy colored hot rod. I just didn't picture that. I pictured a rat rod. This is what I pictured. So just so you know, if I would've wanted a slick hot rod, I would've started with a better body. But having said that, if I wanted to, I got the tools and the know-how and a gallon or two of Bondo. <laughs> I could do a Bondo Billy or a Bad Chad on this thing and make it slick as glass if that's what I wanted. But like I said, if I'd have wanted that, I'd have started out with a better body. All right, that's enough of that. Let's finish these headers so we can move on to something else.
How's your confidence level now, Red? Yep, we good. Yeah, I imagine a lot of people would go hate on it, but man, it come a long ways from that pile of abandoned yard art we started with. So on these headers, we built the headers. We didn't weld it to the plans until we got both of them done and we got them up in there to make sure they're both on the same angle and same height off the end. And then we tacked the plans, and then we checked them again, then we got it like exactly like we wanted. Then we took them off and welded the inside the plans, header pipes to the plans. So just so you know how we've done that, get it lined up. But I mean, you look where it points to that hinge, oh, they both same, so we're gonna call it a win. Most of you guys already know this, but hey, pipe fitting can be a challenge, especially when you're trying to come in with the curve and the pipe coming into a horn, it gets bigger as it goes. Yeah, that was a challenge, all right. Not for the pain of heart, for sure. Hey, no hill for a stepper, and I'm a high stepper. Hey, it ain't perfect, but who cares? It's a rat rod. So there's that. And don't forget, subscriptions are free all week. Man, that's a lot of work. I'm taking the rest of the day off of pay. Appreciate you. See you next time.